Everyone, it is Tech Sags Rewind. David Nuno here, Matt Browning, Roy May, The Fan Show, Good Times. You guys have a good time today? We did. I fun. always have a good time in front of a mic. Well, <laughs> this is not like The Fan Show where you can talk for 48 minutes. We're going to try to keep this real short, guys. 44 minutes. You had a quick thought we didn't get into about recruiting. You're loving where we're going recruiting-wise. Yeah, so what, I, what, what we didn't get to talk about, and I'll make this real quick, is... <laughs> end scene. End scene. That's <laughs> it. We're doing really good in recruiting. Done. No, uh... I just use the example of Walter Nolan, number one or number two composite player in the country right now. He's a big defensive tackle out of Tennessee, um, five star, all the world, this, this and that. And the kid is, you know, we're in his top three. What, and again, we may not get him. Do we need him? Our recruiting, our, our D line recruiting is amazing right now. But the thing is, is we in the past would have never had a shot at that kid. We're in the conversation. We're in the conversation, and that to me alone just shows you how well the staff is working. They're well, doing a great job. In the conversation near the end. Yeah, yeah, and then near the yeah, end. We, we may, offer and, and we yeah. might really get this kid. We've yeah. got a good chance. All right. So in the conversation today on the show, we did uh, college football movie characters that we love so much, uh, and I like the guy from the program. Sorry, the Lattimore crazy kid. Twenty-one <laughs> and twenty-one. There he is, the Marvin Leal, number eight out there. Also, Aaron Torres on the Alliance. The positives coming from that one. And, of course, these guys, the fan show returns here on Texags Radio. Hey, um, we'll, we'll get into the topic of the show here. And it's honestly just, I was just thinking of something non-sporty today to throw out as our show topic, and it became sporty slash non-sporty. Who is your favorite college football movie character? Now, you were thinking to yourself, there aren't that many uh, college football movies that I know about, but... I started going through some just to kind of jog people's memories. And, and I know there's some easy ones out there, but We Are Marshall, Rudy, The Express, Waterboy, Greater, which I've never seen, couldn't it be worse, Safety, Little Giants, The Program, which I loved. I absolutely loved The Program. Um, Johnny B. Good, Anthony horrible, Michael Hall. Oh, horrible I, movie. I loved it back in the day, though. Horrible movie. Oh, I loved it. Necessary Roughness? Pretty bad movie. Pretty bad movie. Yeah. Was it Texas State? Or was Texas, Texas State. Yeah. Which was, yeah. Before there was a Texas State. My All-American. Never saw it. Good. Every, it's a good movie. Everybody's All-American. Maybe that's the one I thought. I a, saw it. A Game of Honor. Did not, didn't see Game it. Stands Tall. Didn't see it. Two for the Money. Didn't see it. That's with uh, Pacino and Matthew McConaughey. I can already tell you I don't like it. I don't like Pacino in any kind of movie involving sports. I didn't mind him in what was that movie? Uh, any given any Friday given, or any, any given Sunday? Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it, he's not believable as a football coach. He, didn't he wear a suit like he was like uh, old school? Oh goodness, uh, Forrest Gump, which I didn't think of as a college football movie, <laughs> but he was a uh, All American. This is right, and uh, Paterno, which is unfortunately a, a terrible story, but we have that one um, as well. So those are a couple of the movies I threw out there. If you want to throw in Friday Night Lights. We'd love to hear from you on the A and B text line, 979-693-1150 or the BCSI hotline at that same number. Yes, Obi. I, I, oh, I thought you were going to say something. Well, I, can, I wasn't, but could you – Could <laughs> I don't know who the character would. Would you include any of the uh, <clears throat> festive dancers uh, in Texas A&M from, from the best little whorehouse in Texas? We could do that. They, they were quite festive. It's a Festivus miracle. Let's go around the room and say hello to everybody. <laughs> we go to Dalton there in the fishbowl. Good morning to you, Dalton. Uh, good morning. I'll go with Newt Rock Rockney All-American as my favorite college football movie because that had Ronald Reagan, the actor. That's right. Ronald uh, Reagan. As, Gip, the, as the, gipper. the Gipper. That's right. But we're going with number two, DeMarvin Leal in our 21 and 21. A guy that has played the end, a guy who in the NFL could play multiple positions. Yeah, DeMarvin Leal. Um, I mean, this is, you could have done a coin flip. If you've been keeping up, you'll know who tomorrow is. But um, he's the big eight. He can, uh, he, can, he can do anything you want him to do on the defensive line. He, if you put him inside, he becomes that, that little bit undersized, if you can be undersized at 290, but ridiculously quick defensive tackle that yep. – that guards won't be able to handle. Uh, you can put him on the end, and he's, you know, dominant. Um, he's just that kind of guy that is a a rare talent, a rare combination of of size and speed. He doesn't look at first glance to be that enormous guy because he's a muscular, almost streamlined, but somehow two hundred ninety pounds. There's a lot of power in that guy, and a lot of quickness. 
And I think it's the quickness that he has that's an even better uh, that even better serves him. I can remember a game against the, the game against uh, North Carolina. He just fires off the coming from the the right side of the offense. He's and they're trying to pull a guard to block him on a, like a draw, and he's able to. He's so athletic. He dips underneath the block. So here's this guy pulling around. He's going to try to pick him off. He ducks under the guy and hits the uh, running back in the backfield for about a three yard loss. They, you can count on your hand on one hand. Five, you know how many guys in the world can do that? I mean, it's he's that kind of uh, that kind of speed and athleticism. But then he, you see the power. Go back to the Tennessee game, and he fights through a double team to uh, sack the quarterback and cause a fumble. You know, I mean, it's as spectacular a play as you'll ever see. So. Uh, he has power. He has speed. He's so agile and athletic. And at that position, what his gifts are just so rare at that position. He's he's going to be a, a first-round pick. The the only question will be how, how high. high. Thoughts yeah. of LSU yesterday and USC saying, you know, I know we got this little pack going on over here with the Alliance, but we're going to schedule a game with each other in Las Vegas. Hi, guys. I mean, just your, your thoughts of the timing of that and just everything that is happening with the Alliance. Well, I don't know how much you guys cover you. It's very on brand for USC. They're just so oblivious to everything. I mean, they got uh, coaches getting arrested, administrators getting arrested. They're trying to fire Clay Helton, but he wins just enough where they can't really fire him. Now, hey, yeah, we got this alliance and uh, let's um, yeah, let's let's make this big, bold announcement uh, a day after our, our commissioners kind of try to put a kibosh on the SEC. What I would say is, listen, you know, I I saw a lot of the media backlash and I get it. It's a, you know, a verbal agreement that is kind of vague and we don't really know anything. And there's sort of a scheduling alliance, but there's not really a scheduling alliance and it's not going to take place anytime soon because everybody's schedules locked in. I, I get the premise of it though. And I know I'm talking to an SEC audience here and Greg Sankey is the most powerful person in college sports right now. And he's earned that right. Um, but I think what the alliance was really about was just saying, we have to have a seat at the table when these big decisions are being made. And we don't think Greg Sankey, the SEC, is going to take the Pac-12 seriously. And by the way, they shouldn't take the Pac-12 seriously. The Pac-12 has given them no reason to take them seriously. Awesome All right, so let's get into it. I know that Gabe would come to you guys and ask you what's on your mind. So because of that, I'm not going to ask you anything. We're just going to move on, all right? Right on? Okay. No, I like kidding. it. Let's, let's start off with it's, you, Roy. It's close, so close to the weekend. My mind is generally blank anyway, <laughs> so I really have nothing on my mind. So um, what I love about Roy is last night he's texting me like at 9 o'clock at night and saying, what do we want to talk? He's like, he wants to run down. And then all of a sudden he's like, you know what? Just you, you throw things at me. Let's just go. I'm ready. Because you've had a lot of time to kind of stew on some topics, but we'll start off with your first thing. What's on your mind? Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's what's on everybody's mind is, holy crap, it's here, right? Yeah. Um, now, this coming weekend, the slate of games is horrific, but it's college football, and we'll watch it. Um, but, you know, coming out of fall camp and with Jimbo announcing the starter, it's it's real now, you know? It's like, instead of you thinking about building a house, like, now you're picking out tiles. Like, this is real. And so... But you're down to the final three tiles. <laughs> and, well, down to the final five, and you only care about three of them. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> And it doesn't matter which three, but I think the excitement is there and it's weird to me because this year the, the, ex, the expectations are through the roof and I think rightfully so with a program that has been on the upward trajectory with the building and the recruiting of the development, uh, you know, the, the coaching pieces and assistance that Jimbo continuously keeps adding in um, and I, I'm so excited and I know, you know, never look past anything. But I'm so all in on this Colorado game. And I know we got to play Kent State. I get that. And I know that Kent State had, just, you know, whatever, 36 points a game or whatever. I don't care. It's Kent State. But I'm excited for the game. I'm excited to get going. But I'm excited for that first really true test, you know, in the altitude in Colorado. And, you know, a little BAS kicks in knowing, you know, how things have gone in Colorado before for us. So I think it's an early opportunity for us to really put a stamp on it. Because no matter what we do playing Kent State, minus, you know, completely stepping on it, it's not going to matter. You know, we're going to see a lot of players going to see a lot of depth in Kent State. I am just fired up for the Colorado game. So, I, and for next week, we'll get into Kent State because it's you know you still talk about the opponent in front of you, but um, and I know that Jimbo is always about you know the the the, the game you got to play, not the the one after. But man, that Colorado game is just a massive opportunity, national stage, even where Colorado is as a program, kind of 
you know, playing Texas in bowl game kind of level. Um, you know, they're still, a, they're still a brand name. You know, it's still a big test. So I, I'm fired, fired up for this year. I like the way you phrased it. You're, we're not overlooking Kent State, although it should be a victory. Should be. All these should be victories. But I think Colorado is a good enough test to get you ready for when you start SEC play there in a couple weeks after. Yeah, and it presents also the test that will, uh, you know, really start the narrative nationally for this program as well because perception ties into polls, and we've seen that. We've seen being on the outside looking in. So, you know, that's where you really take your first step is that Colorado game. What do you got for us, bro? Well, um, that's kind of the route I was going to go. Roy always steals my thunder. Every you know time. what? Though? You can have your own spin on that same thunder. I, 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 I've got some spin. I, I, I can't tell. I am so pumped up about the season. Uh, uh, you, it's, it's so funny that it, – and it is. It's, it's great for us all because we, it's such a it, – it takes away from all the other – madness going on in the world we get to focus on something that we really love and that's aggie football i mean you look around the world and i'm not getting into all that but i mean it's just so fun to see this coming up and it's a it's a it's a release from all that other nonsense and and this is it this this really does this has a this is is could be a very very special year i think i don't know if we've ever been this excited that I mean, was a monumental show it's probably the best i've watched today guys what are we supposed to do after we watch these videos Ooh. Roy, <laughs> soccer, <laughs> like, like and retweet, right? Like, oh, yeah. like and retweet. That's right. And comment, and comment, and subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Well, always, always make sure you like because of how YouTube analytics work. The more likes you get, the more stable you are as a platform. So make sure that you're sharing it and telling people to like it. Don't just share it, but make sure you also like the video and, and comment. Us, and tell us how good we are. And hold the mean. Co- Actually, you can do the mean comments too, right? Yeah, sure. Be, be as mean as you want. Yeah, to these we guys. got thick skin. <laughs> I don't have thick skin. Okay, yeah, just on this side of the table. That's fair enough. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.